Are we live? Am I doing this right? Hey! It's been so long. Happy Sunday. How is everyone? Hi, Sherry. Thanks for the kind words. It's been a while, so we'll hang out. And yeah, Addie's in the house. Addie is our hostess with the mostest. She is the moderator. Please be nice to Addie. Going to give it a little bit to let people come in. Hi, Ashley. Um, before I just start jawjacking, as they say. And gosh, it's been so long. We got some catching up to do. Bethany, that is a very good question. Why do you think that is? Dano, Dano. Okay, Dano, you have got to contact me. Uh, you, I was over in the UK last year and I didn't know how to contact you, but I would have tried to find you, share coffee. Oh my gosh, Dano, Dano. And part of the reason, I'll be totally honest, I picked this time was that hopefully Dano would see it and log in. Hey, Wendy. Hi, William. Wow, you were homeless in Houston. Jeremy, are you still driving? Oh, so Bethany, Bethany wants us to go right out, right, right, uh, jump the gate and start running. So I think it was all worse. And what has been happening, I mean, the, the Reagan, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, Reagan, Ronald Reagan cut $15 billion worth of affordable housing funding. They cut a lot of other things like food stamps. Uh, it's about $35 billion in today's money. It was the start of the homelessness we see today before Reagan cut, made that cut. Um, there was no such thing as chronic homelessness. The mega homeless services, mega nonprofits, mega shelters didn't even exist. So that was the start of it. And then, you know, it just kind of snowballed. The 08 crash had a lot to do with it. But um, the biggest issue is, and I don't know when it started. I was kind of sneaky um, that all the, um, the uh, affordable housing, like right now, there's a great... You know what? I should do a, a reaction video or play it along with one of these times. The there's a uh, 60 Minutes did a uh, feature about a Canadian company, and I don't have anything against Canadian companies. Uh, I have a lot of wonderful Canadian friends. One of our board members is from Canada. We used to do a lot of work in Canada before COVID, but there is a business in Canada that's just buying up single family homes in the United States and it's driving up rent um, and it's driving up the the cost of housing. And there's other issues of zoning and it's just really, really bad. Uh, COVID played a role in it because uh, COVID, I believe, uh, made homeless more visible, and it also got the public scared. People are scared. And, uh, well, we can maybe go into it later, but I think it was all of it. It wasn't just Reagan. I mean, Reagan was, uh, as they say, the spark that lit the fire. And um, ever since, uh, it was, you know, just snowballed to the homelessness we see today. Eric, no, I do not know that channel. 
Boy, I forgot how to scroll on chats. Please forgive me. I like it's like riding a bicycle. I'm sure I will remember, but it's been a while. Hey, William, sorry you don't care about this channel, but homeless people, and even if you don't have any compassion for homeless people, as a taxpayer, you pay huge money for each homeless person outside. Ah, Williams. Hey, Matthew. Yes, Matthew, it has been a while. Roseanne, I am glad that you're finally got an apartment. Oh, Dano, I am glad you asked. Dano has given me a nice... A nice segue. William, I can't figure you out. I don't know if you're here trolling. You made a comment about shelters in Houston being worse than homeless, so I assume you have experience with that. So, okay, wow, lots of old and new names. I, I was hoping you guys would remember. Yeah, it's, it's. Unbelievable. Once we get up to a hundred, usually it used to be we were probably uh, would hit uh, 200. Um, we haven't done this in a while, but when we hit a hundred more, um, I will uh, talk about some things coming up. And I even have some guests tonight. We have a homeless woman in Wisconsin, and we also have another homeless woman in Austin. So let me see if they're still hanging out. And Addie is our amazing moderator. Malza, hello, hello. Casual flipper, hello. Boy. It's like the family is back. I know, I know, I know, I know. I got to So I, I've told you before. So in New York, we did this every week at this time. And in New York, it was a good time for me. Like the day was done. It was 8 o'clock, 5 o'clock here. Now that I'm in L.A., it, it just, it kills the day because it takes – several hours for me to set this up, which is, you know, understandable. And I got to back up one bit. I work every day. I'm trying to take one day off a week. And I, I was thinking about maybe it should be Sunday, but that's not going to happen. So maybe I'll try another day and we'll get back to these on Sunday. But, but, and, 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 and you ready for what's happening? Are you ready? Hey, Sheila. So make sure you pay attention to the community tab this week. Probably on Tuesday, there's something amazing. I mean, really big, really big. Um, it could change, um, but... Right now, pretty sure it's going to be Tuesday. Then, how many of you guys, we haven't talked since the Grants Pass case, have we? Are you guys familiar with what's happening with Grants Pass, Grants Pass versus Johnson going to the Supreme Court? Is that a yes or a no? Do you guys, are you guys familiar with that? Do, do I need to bring you up to date on that? 
Um, before we jump into uh, before we jump into uh, the updates. Okay, I will, I will, I will. And here's a link. Here's Grant's Pass versus Johnson. And I forgot, Addy. Okay, Addy just read my captions. I totally, what do you mean trying to find a way? Do you not have your car anymore? I haven't even talked to Addy. My my life has been, been crazy, crazy, crazy. Everybody's life's been crazy, right? I, I think... What I have learned, and and this is, um, we all go through different levels of crisis, and everybody's crisis is different, and it affects them differently. Like I went through crisis when I was homeless. I went through crisis when I was housed, right? And you can't judge other people saying their crisis is less than your crisis, crisis because you know, we all are just trying to navigate this crazy world, but let's talk about Grant's Pass, okay? Grant's Pass is a city in Oregon, uh, about 40,000 people. I just got back from there. That's a hint. Uh, this one I can talk about, so hold on a second. So I was in Grant's Pass about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, first off, big thing happening Tuesday. Can't talk about it. I'll post it on the community. It's huge, massive. Grants Pass, we have a video also probably coming out Tuesday. It should, it, hopefully it will be like our Helsinki documentary, um, a little different because um, Helsinki, we're talking about solutions and Grants Pass is a city with 40,000 people and they've made it illegal to sleep outside. Basically, that's the easy way uh, to say it. Hey, Richard, Grants Pass made it illegal for people to sleep outside. And if you look at Amber's video, Amber is the video I put up earlier last week or earlier this week. Um, she is like, 30 tickets at $300 each. That's almost $10,000. How does a homeless person without any money pay for that? How? How? That's crazy, right? So cities around the country are trying to criminalize homelessness. Grants Pass, a city of 40,000 people, suffering from the affordable housing crisis like other cities in America, instead of building shelters or helping people into housing, they decided to make sleeping outside illegal. And if a police officer sees you with a tent or a blanket or a pillow or a sleeping bag, they can basically give you a ticket and you could get arrested and it's really psychological warfare. So what happened in Grants Pass, there is a lower court that ruled that for a city to criminalize homelessness, they have to be able to offer help. Let me explain that. So before a police officer can give a ticket for somebody that is sleeping on a sidewalk, they have to be able to offer them help, a shelter bed. So what the courts decided was that like a normal function to survive, sleeping, going to the bathroom, sitting down, those are normal functions, right? We all do it. We all have to do it. So the courts said Grants Pass can't do what it's doing. It's, it's against our rights unless they can offer support. 
and it's going to the Supreme Court. So if you're in Washington, D.C., I put the link there. Let me find uh, the rally. Uh, where is it? How you can help local advocacy, the rally. If you're close to Washington, D.C., I really recommend everybody. Here's the link to the rally. So I've got to make this quick because I got to bring on our first guest, right? Um, so Grants Pass, the case is going to the Supreme Court. April 22nd, 22nd is when the court starts here. They're not going to make a decision until June. There's going to be all kinds of advocates in, I will be there. Uh, hopefully Addie will be there. Lots of different people will be there. So let me, let me see. So what is happening this week? There's Tuesday. Really important. It's secret. I really wish I could tell you. I can't. Hopefully it will be Tuesday. Tuesday, also Tuesday, hopefully, it's going to be a miracle to get this done. So for Helsinki, we interviewed 21 people. It took us four months to produce that. In Grants Pass, we interviewed 19 people, and we're trying to turn it around in two weeks. But next Friday, 3 p.m. West Coast time. I don't know what time that is for you, Dan, all over in the UK. 3 p.m. West Coast time, Los Angeles time. Next Friday, we are going to premiere... this place, which is also about criminalization. Next week is the week of criminalization. Next week is the week of criminalization. So something really amazing. It's going to be really amazing. Um, our Video on Grants Pass, which is going to be really amazing. Uh, hopefully, it'll be up Tuesday. And next Friday, our video on Grant, well, not our video, uh, our movie, our scripted movie. You guys seen the movie or seen the BTS, right? Our movie on um, Grants Pass. Or, I'm, let's back up here. Tuesday. Something really big. Tuesday, our Grants Pass video. And then I am going to uh, uh, premiere our movie Displaced, followed by, followed by, please forget that I'm more scattered brain than normal. We haven't done this live stream in a while. And then followed by a live stream again and with experts and homeless people. So let me bring on Serena. Hi. Hi, Serena. How you doing? I am okay. I assume you're in a uh, parking lot in Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> How was your day? Oh, it's warm out today, finally. Wow. Car broke down, so I'm so sorry. One of those days. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. We were talking. We did a, a, a little live stream the other day, and you had many stories of police harassing you. Yeah, trying to, trying to push you to different cities. Yeah, like. Uh, Man, in Green Bay, they cor kind of corralled everybody to one little park. And all here, they cor kind of try trying to corral everybody to the park and rides. And now they're, you know, oh, they're going to close down the park and rides and nobody knows where they're going to go or 
the, like the last time they raided the park and ride, they they went in at midnight, man, started banging on doors, telling everybody they were gonna tow their vehicles and campers and. Oh, I'm so just, sorry. I'm and no so matter where you go, they push you here, you know. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah, I was out in Waukesha County for a while before I got here. And uh, they had this cop that they fired in Milwaukee because he, he shot three people sleeping in their cars. You know, they woke up. They startled because someone's banging in a bright light. And he shot them. And uh, oh then they hired him in Waukesha. So it's really scary. You know, you park somewhere just trying to be quiet and safe. And someone bang on your door, man. You're praying and it's not him, you know. All right. Um, so they, they hired the, the cop in a different city. Yeah. Oh, my. So you know, when you have to live in your vehicle, man, it's pretty scary to have a cop that's knowing to shoot people for just being waking up in their vehicle, you know? Oh, my gosh. Wow. So how long have you been sleeping in your in your truck? Uh, two years this time. Wow. And how often are police... Uh, moving you on or harassing you? Oh, uh, any chance they can get, you know, they they like watch you. Yeah. Where are you park? Where are you going? Like, man, one day I just stopped to take my dog for a, a walk at the park. And he's 15 years old, so he doesn't move much anymore, you know? So we're just sitting in the van waiting for him to get, get up the energy to want to go out. Man, they come in and then they they jump me, you know. They freaking arrested me because I helped someone move and they found some um, anxiety medication she forgot. They took my dog to the pound. They towed my van. They locked me up for two days. Said they were charging me with a felony. Man, I got out. I I got away from there. I I, I not going back around that town for nothing. Yeah, I can't imagine what it must be like in rural small towns. I mean, big towns, too. I mean, the criminalization of homelessness continues to grow. Yeah. All gun? Well, here in Milwaukee, you know, it, it's kind of... They, they had a policy, a police policy, about how they can uh, interact with homeless people. So it's like they kind of just ignore you. So in any every anything you can't really contact the police because if they know you're homeless, they're gonna ignore you. Yeah. Is there anybody helping? Is there any kind of outreach or any kind of uh, homeless case managers and service providers that are trying to help? No. Like, they've been rumoring for a couple months now that they're going to have to clear the parking ride, and nobody's coming around. Nobody's explaining anything or telling anybody or giving them any options. And then when they when they do come around, like, they came around for the pit count, so they got caught, you know? And then they had to come back. Yeah. And then they, they treat you like you're a joke, you know? They ignore you, like... One is standing there, she's texting on her phone and giggling, and every time she like, huh, what'd you say? And I, I got to repeat myself like a dozen times, you know? And then she makes appointments, well, I'll be there Monday, no Tuesday, no Wednesday, you know? Always changing, canceling. Wow. So we can't, there's nobody really helping. Yeah. Now, where you you're parked in a parking lot? Are there other homeless people in that that parking lot? Yeah, they're getting a lot more now that the weather warmed up. More people are outside. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, I feel for you. I feel for you. I feel for every a uh, homeless person that's outside. And Sharina, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll be doing this again. You're wonderful. Bye. All right, thank you. Bye. 
So Sharina is one of two guests that we're having today. Both of them are homeless. Um, and hopefully I just sent the right email to the person. Um, the criminalization of homelessness is growing across the country. Sharina is living in her truck. And, you know, uh, we talked for about 10 minutes the other day. She told me uh, uh, a bunch of um, stories of how police uh, make um, their life extremely hard. So, for those of you that have not been with us since the beginning, we are going to post a Grants Pass video, hopefully on Tuesday, to catch the traffic from this miracle that's happened. And next Friday, and let me see, I keep on, sorry, I, I got to keep, it's, I am very unique in that I think it's important that we have the voice of homeless people. So to do that, you know, uh, these are men and women who are, you know, don't necessarily have Wi-Fi. They're in their truck. They're in their tent. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to navigate all that. And, and I'm, I'm not like um, the point of telling you this is not to show anything about me because I'm nothing special, but to show the challenges that homeless people have to go through, but then also to show and highlight how wonderful it is to have homeless people join you. So I don't know what happened to our next guest. Uh, I will message her again. Um, and let me see. And she is in Austin. And I am going to do one more thing. If you guys have not seen this, do, 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 and here, this, and you know, I was going to actually do a little teaser. You know how I've done that in the past, but the opening scene for Displaced. The opening scene for, okay, my other homeless guest doesn't seem to be there, which happens. So here is Displaced. If you have not seen it yet, the, that's a behind the scenes. And in Missouri, it is now a 15-day jail fine, 15-day jail fine. 15 day jail for being homeless. 15 for being homeless in Tennessee, it's a felony. So you're a homeless person and you don't have a criminal record, but it's hard to find a job. And now you get arrested in Tennessee for being homeless and it's a felony. Can you imagine how much harder it is to get a job? And that is one of the many reasons. And again, guys, I'm, I want to continue. I'm checking to see if my other homeless guest uh, is around um, while I'm telling these stories. So uh, you guys, I, I, I'm a scatterbrain to begin with, but tonight trying to... Uh, engage and get a couple of homeless people to join us. Um, and uh, so next Friday, when? Next Friday, what time? Glad you asked. 3 p.m. Los Angeles time. 3 p.m. Best Coast time. 6 p.m. East Coast time. 
3 p.m. West Coast time. And we will be premiering Displaced at 3 p.m. And then immediately after, for those of you that have been hanging out with us, you know we've done this a couple of times. We play the movie, and it is this is the best movie we've done. Um, it is so powerful. The first scene, oh my gosh, it's gonna blow you guys away, and then you're gonna the ending, and oh my gosh, the scene with the cat. Oh, oh, I gotta, I can't laugh. Addie got to remind me, we can't let Lucy watch the scene with the cat. <laughs> uh, uh, one of our mutual friends uh, really loves cats. Um, okay, so let me check one more time. Where is our guest? She is not there. Okay. Now I'm checking to see if she is okay. This happens a lot with Addie too, is the wonderful homeless friends that uh, we have when they don't respond. And often it's just, you know, their phone died or they don't have a way to charge their phone or something else happened, uh, you know, um, then um, they're not able to make contact. Uh, and I get worried that everything is okay. Okay, so she's coming. Let's see. She just responded. So let's see if she's going to join us. Let me send her the link again. This is a homeless woman in. So. She is turning her laptop on. Okay. Oops. You know what? I probably sent her the wrong. Yeah. Um, somebody just asked about the premiere. The premiere is going to be right here. Right here. We're still finishing it. Uh, we got a lot going on this week. And uh, we will be... As soon as it's uploaded, we'll set the premiere um, so that you guys can all start doing the, you know, the remembering thing. And let me see. I keep checking to see when. And there's this weird thing with YouTube now. When I when I log, I like to watch uh, more in real time with you guys on the chat. But uh, when I go to uh, a, a different tab on my web browser, it sets it off. I don't, that's kind of funky. That is kind of funky. Hey, Jerry in New Hampshire. And Shanna, I, I'm so glad she took the time uh, from her truck. Uh, she uh, reached out in our online support group and said she wanted to chat. So Okay, still not on, okay.
and okay and huh <laughs> Just waiting, just waiting. And there she is with her dog. You guys ready? And yeah. there you yeah, are. Right. Hey, how are you? Hi. I see I see a dog. How's it going today? It's good. I see, I, I see a dog. Yeah, this is my baby girl. This is Toll. Hey, Toll. Yeah. So, uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, soul. Soul, soul, soul. Yeah. So, Lamb, you're in, you're in your tent. Right? Uh, well, it's a canopy. Okay. Yeah. Um, a makeshift tent. Yeah. And you're in the woods in Austin someplace. Yeah. And you are, for those of you that are near Austin, she is planning a rally. So there's rallies April 22nd in cities around the country. I know Miami's doing one April 24th. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Lamb here is doing one in Austin. Uh, it's at the courthouse, I assume. Can you hear me? I don't yeah. think you can hear me. Oh, there you are. You want to want to say where your where no, your rally is? And I'm trying, trying to have it at the actual state capital. And, and when what time? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I just I'm able to hear you. It's tough to get internet out yeah. in the woods. Um, I'm I'm trying to have it at the state capitol. Um, I was trying to get. Um, I'm not sure if I have to get permission. Okay, very cool. Okay. So you were telling me about how the cops came in and uh, it really is. If I could do this on the phone, it'd be better. But it's said to do it on here. So. Oh no! You can yeah, do it they, from the phone. Um, they gave me. The they showed up Go on. Ahead. It was a Tuesday, and they said that they were going to be really. Yeah, I'd probably be better. Yeah, let me take you out and they then try to, to come back on come your back phone on a third, or No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Talk to you later. Let me know when you're back. So just exactly what I'm saying, right? Um, I think it's extremely important that we have the voice of people homeless that are currently homeless. But to do that, it's not always easy. Right, so she, oh, there she is. She's already. You're quick. Yeah, you're quick. Yeah. Well, I was on my phone. I had it in my hand, but ah. Okay, so tell me about the the last time the police, the big when the police came in. So they they showed up on a Tuesday and they said. Um, you know, they didn't even clarify really that what was going on. They just said, we have a crew here and uh, we need to clean up. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to this point right here, probably on Thursday. So it'll be Friday before anything over this, this marker is, is taken. And so he pointed to a fence that was directly behind my van. Um, and 
that was like a it, it's where one person's camp ended and mine began. And so um, I figure that's Friday, right? So then Thursday they showed back up and they started clearing everything out up to that point. Uh, my campmate, he came out from his area and he's got, uh, he was trying to figure out a, a game plan for him himself, you know, cause all after me, it was just going up the ridge. And, um, the officer told him again, he said, yeah, well, it'll be Friday before we even get to this, you know, like tomorrow before we even get to this. And then my campmate said he watched the cleanup crew that the city has, um, hired to go out. I know they use three different companies. Um, they tried to get inside my van and when they couldn't get inside the van, and they, he could tell that they kind of got a little upset. So they came over with what looked like a giant claw machine and picked the van up, but it was real bottom heavy. And so it just kind of tore it into two pieces. So then once the, the insides were exposed to them, they pilfered through my stuff and took what they wanted. And then after they got what they wanted, they picked up the bottom part of it and threw it into the trash compactor. I didn't even think that they could do that, but they did. And, um, oh you know, God. I had $600 worth of school books $600 worth of school books in there. Um, I was yeah, in college. Cool. And so, um, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they, um, you totally lost your van if they broke it in half. Yeah. Um, like I said, they threw it into the trash, into a trash compactor. And then, um, wow. Like six, all everything I own, I had sentimental items. You know, my boyfriend passed away in 2021. He passed, he was taking a shower and he had a heart attack. And so I have the shirt that he, well, I had the shirt he was wearing before he got in the shower and, and died. And so I kept it in a Ziploc bag that's gone forever. But, but the worst part is that because I could not access my books, I could not access my classwork because they got my laptop. I lost my financial aid and, and um, there's been another hiccup in me trying to get into another school. So uh, it's really hurt my, my, you know, like pursuit of, of happiness. Like I'm trying to go to school and do what we are taught all throughout our elementary, junior high and high school years. You know, next step is go to college if you want a good job. And I'm trying to do that. It might be 20 years later, but I directly lost my financial aid as a result of that sweep. Like, I don't know how they expect us to get back up on our feet whenever they come and they steal everything we own, all of our identifying documentation, anything we need to get a job, anything we like. I walked away that day with my clothes on my back, my dog and my phone. I didn't even have a cord to charge it with. Oh my. And uh, th this doesn't, uh, that was probably one of the worst experiences, but there's been other experiences, right? Yeah. I mean, um, I've, I've personally, I have been, trying to you know work in this field for a while so i was like i was on the unhoused community council but that really wasn't a police thing i mean it's i i tend to stay away from the cops you know like but i i have on footage them doing this type of stuff to other people um i actually am wanting to, to sue the city of austin as a result of that sweep and so i've been collecting evidence from other people um there's footage there's you know pictures of them doing this type of thing to other people that one of the incidents they um this was after they reinstated proposition b back in 2021 and <clears throat> we're just filming them you know like we caught we even got a picture of the notice that they used to they would glue them to the cement uh pillars underneath the bridge and it said the date on it well then the day before they were supposed to go you know show up they were actually they showed up a, a day early and they were throwing away this tent, but the tent belonged to a woman who was six months pregnant. So mm -hmm. I, I imagine that in six months she had, you know, collected things for her child that the police were now throwing in the trash. You know, they don't have any regard for us. They don't care. You know, when the officer asked me when he showed up that day, he said, do you know whose land this is? And I said, yes, it's city, city of Austin's land. It's part of the green belt. And then he looked at me and he said, well, you should have stayed small and out of sight. I'm in the middle of the woods. I can't get any more out of sight. And my camp really wasn't big. So, and the reason you're out in the woods is so that you're out of sight. Yeah. I mean, that's, I prefer to be in the woods. I, I would 
No, I can never, I don't understand why people would go sleep underneath a bridge in front of everybody. This is a shameful, you know, experience. And well, I, I think the reason is safety, right? So you had a yeah, van that's and you were able told. to get out in the woods and some people just can't do that. Yeah, that's what I was told. I was told that actually they prefer it. Not only that, because they have less likely, um, they're less likely to be stolen from. Uh, nobody's going to try to hurt them if there's a bunch of people around. So that's why they would choose to congregate underneath the bridges along 183. And it would be whole little tent cities. It was yeah. bad before, like, because the city, they they did away with Proposition B, and then it outraged the public. <clears throat> so they they did a vote, reinstated it, and then it wasn't long before you know you started seeing less people under the bridges. And so what they were reporting to the public is is oh, oh that the homeless population is going down. You know more people are being housed. That's not the truth. The truth is the numbers are going down because you're forcing them. You're destroying their homes. You're forcing them out of where they are. They're already displaced. You don't have anything in all this time. The city of Austin has received over a billion dollars in private donations and government funding since 2021. They have bought two hotels, converted them into rapid rehousing, bought a warehouse and converted it into congregate shelter. And that's all that they've done in the form of building anything for us. They, there's nothing for us. It's getting worse everywhere. It's getting worse. Yeah. No. My so. heart goes out to you. And thank you so much for working out the technical issues so you could spend some time with us. Yeah. I mean, I've been you. wanting to get get this out there because it's not just me. There's people out there that are disabled senior citizens. And that's where my heart really goes. Yeah, you know, yeah. because they, no one cares. Well, there are people like you that do care. And yeah. I thank you for that. Well, the the home, the invisible people community here is is really um, wonderful people, and I will have to get to Austin again. Yeah, I mean I it's will. it's getting bad, and I don't know if you've heard any reports of people reporting that people are starting to go missing, and I've heard this come out of other cities, and like there's a guy who has a podcast on Spotify, and he's out of Arizona. No, New Mexico. And he, he was saying that people are starting to disappear. And then a friend of mine came over and was saying something similar. Yeah. Yeah, no, I th there's all kinds of madness. But, hey, I'll let you get back to your day. Please stay safe. And we'll Thank do you. this again. And I'll try to get out to Austin. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Uh, How are you guys? Um, listening to homeless people's stories. Listening to homeless people's stories. I mean, I say it like this with our, our our support group. We facilitate an online support group. Or it's where I met Addie, where I met these two women. Um, I get to laugh and cry with homeless people every single day. And it is, so one thing, let me, I'll say it like this. One thing I struggle with is there's a moral aspect here. You could argue over fiscal responsibility. And yes, money is important. But these are human beings. It shouldn't be that hard to get people the help they need. It shouldn't be that hard to get homeless people the help they need. 
but it's getting harder. For every $100 increase in median rent, homelessness increases by 9%. You probably hear me say that a lot or see me respond in the comments a lot with that. The leading cause of homelessness is the lack of affordable housing. And housing costs continue to go up. So homelessness is going to continue to increase. And it's going to get worse, and it shouldn't. So there's this part of me that just wants to scream and explode because these are human beings. <coughs> it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. Anyways, I'm... I'm Grateful to Sharina and Lamb, not her real name, <coughs> for spending some time with us. Wow. So, as we wind it down... And thank you. I saw Jerry's piano there. I think it's Jerry's piano asking about bringing these back and I'll try. I can't next, next week, next week uh, we're in um, Washington, DC and there's the big rally, but um I really want to. I miss you guys. And I think you all like this time zone, right? Because <laughs> we got Dano back. We streamed a couple of times since Dano wasn't around. I don't know if we did it this time. I I, I just, you know, I, I was, I started off this uh, stream excited. I see many of you have been with us Um Yes, Dana, we will be filming the rally. I, I, many of you have been with us this whole stream. Grateful, grateful, grateful. I started off this stream, you know, excited to hang out with you guys. But, you know, after listening to, you know, because... <laughs> Lamb was live streaming from a tent in the woods of Austin, Texas. Just think about that. I mean, it's is cool. It's cool where technology is today and that homeless people can stream from a tent. But it shouldn't be. It's it's horrible. That's kind of mix, 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 mix me up. So what's next, Sue asks. So Donations are down across the board for all nonprofits. I can even share a link. We're all, uh, when once gas prices went up, donations started tanking for all of us. So the hope was this year that we were going to be able to scale. And that is not going to happen. But, so I'm trying to leverage to do more what you would be considered. Uh, how did something just dinged? Did you hear that? I don't know what. Um, so we do daily news. Here's a link to our daily news. Um, we obviously do videos. Oh, I know what it was. It was the video pop up. And here is our videos. And we have video podcasts coming where I interviewed um, leaders and activists 
from around the country. I interviewed them in San Francisco, and we're going to try to grow out the video podcast to be more consistent. Eddie, thank you, but you don't do I don't ask for money. I mean, we do occasionally ask for money, and we will occasionally do a live stream that's a fundraiser. This isn't it. Just I want to clarify that, right? We connect when we do these just to hang out. This is not a fundraiser for invisible people. If you'd like to donate, I'm grateful. We need the funds. We do good work. Uh, but this is not, I, you don't see me asking for money. The reason I put the donation link there is y'all did super chat. And YouTube takes 30% of a super chat. And I can't stop you from doing the super chat. Um, YouTube is not allowing them to donate. So I just clicked on the link and it works for me. And let me see, because that, yeah, it goes right through. So the link is working for me. Um, oh, Addy, I'll put it in for you. And here's a link to our website. I will be doing, that's for our website. We will be doing some fundraising and stuff soon, but yeah, don't, this, I don't do these to fundraise. Um, all together now, Tuesday, something big's gonna happen. Grants pass and our producer, was uh, texting me while we were doing this, and I got to um, uh, thank you very much, Anonymous. Uh, and then I got to um, do some stuff for that video. I got to do it immediately after this. Um, and then everybody repeat after me, Friday, 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 3 p.m. Los Angeles time, Friday, 3 p.m. Los Angeles time. Now, Displaced is only about 14 minutes, so you want to be on time. I will post the link as soon as we can. Sue, um, the best that you guys can do is what you're already doing, is sharing our content. So I get it, right? People are hurting for money. And, you know, prices are up. You can argue the economy is doing good. And in many ways it is. But at your wallet or at your purse, it's still tight. And people aren't given. So how I always say is that, you know, by sharing, sharing the content and educating more people, it helps more than you know. So... Let's close it out. Anything, couple minutes, what would you guys like to talk about? I write too much. It is definitely, definitely an issue. Jerry's Piano Bar, I totally understand. Thank you. My ducks. <laughs> Dana wants longer streams. Longer streams? Longer streams? Oh, men's daily advice. Thank you. So what we're doing about Finland, I don't know if you guys all saw the Finland video. We are going to... Minnesota and we're going to do a follow-up to show cities here that are ending homelessness. LF, I was homeless. I was homeless. I wasn't houseless. I was homeless. Lots of people want to do this unhoused thing, right? Most of them are housed. 
okay, you guys wanted Iran at the end. And I got a, I got a video on this. I just haven't had the time to finish it. Housed people, housed people, people in housing, right? They like to use unhoused. Police, unhoused. Reporters, unhoused. NIMBYs, unhoused. Everybody uses unhoused. Homeless people prefer the word homeless. Most homeless people do. A few that have been close to service workers or service providers or actually become service providers start saying unhoused. But majority of homeless people still use the word homeless. Because unhoused is becoming so popular, houseless is now growing with housed people. Homeless people still use the word homeless. Academics want you to use people experiencing homelessness. Um, so here's the deal. If a person, homeless or housed, wants you to call them structurally challenged, and I have a homeless friend that prefers that term, then you call them structurally challenged, right? If somebody wants to be referred to as unhoused, call them unhoused. If somebody wants to be referred to as houseless, call them houseless. Use the term houseless. I was homeless. I prefer the word homeless. One of the reasons is like, so when, if you're saying the word homeless is bad, you're saying I'm bad. When the world used to think people with left hand, that left-handed people were the devil. We didn't start saying unright-handed. <coughs> we educated the public that they're not of the devil. And now we say left-handed. So here's the thing, homeless you know, the fact that homeless are, that people are homeless is bad. Homeless people are not bad. You can argue with me there, but you know what I'm going to say? Enron, Bernie Madoff, rich white people have ripped off more Americans, more people around the world than all the homeless people combined. There are bad humans. There are good humans. But most homeless people are good. Most house people, I believe, are good. My point is, right, I was homeless. I was homeless. I, trying to change the word. And then it, everybody's using different words, right? Um, it's just confusing. People don't know what to to say, to use. Ah, anyways, not a super big rant. But you got a little rant out of me. Happy Dino. Dano. Dino. Yeah. Uh. Okay, folks. I had fun. I am grateful for the two homeless women that joined us. Super grateful for Addie uh, being our moderator. Uh, love all of you. Thank you for hanging out. Tuesday, big day. Grants pass. We need you all to share that video. And then Friday, 3 p.m. Los Angeles time, displaced. You guys have a great evening.